Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad you stopped by. Today, I have several Pinterest-inspired projects sure to add a festive touch of fall to your home. Well, there is lots of fun in store today, so let's get these projects started. For our first project, I am taking my inspiration from this adorable little pillow. I think that is so cute. It's also very rustic and very primitive looking, and I want mine to be a little more on the farmhouse side. So I'm going to be using these ticking stripe fabrics and also this natural cotton muslin to create my idea of that pillow. I'm going to be starting with my letters because whatever you use as the template for your letters will determine the size of the pillow that you're going to need. And I'm going to be using the Iron Orchid Designs in typesetting to create those letters. I also bought this fabric ink on Amazon and I've not used it yet, so I think this is going to be the perfect project to give it a try. So I've pulled out the letters that I'm going to need and I have them on my thin mount here. And then I also have a strip of my cotton muslin fabric that is wide enough and long enough for all of the letters that I'm going to need. And then I squirted a little line across the top. And now I'm taking my brayer and I'm going to get ink on there. You can tell I'm going to need a little bit more. And now I'm going to take my brayer and roll it over the top of my letters here. I want to make sure I'm acting quickly here because I don't want it drying. I just messed that up there. I'm going to have to wipe that off. And I'm going to turn it over, press it down, and then just walk my fingers over all of the letters here to make sure that I'm going to get some good ink transfer to my fabric below. And I also left space between each of the letters here to give me enough room to get my scissors in there and cut my letters apart. And I'm going to lift this up. Ooh. It's much, much darker than my normal Iron Orchid Designs ink that I use. I really like that. I'm going to set this aside to let this dry, and I'm also going to go and wash the ink off of all of my tools here. The only thing I noticed differently about the fabric ink is that it has a little bit of an odor to it. Other than that, it is just absolutely perfect. I am so, so thrilled with how this came out. I am going to continue letting it dry more thoroughly, but it is dry to the touch right now, so I am going to cut out my letters. And as I'm cutting them out, I want to leave a little bit of an edge there because I plan on fraying all of the edges, so that's going to give it a nice little rustic farmhouse look as well. So after cutting out all of my letters here on the cotton muslin, I just thought they were so very flimsy, so I stamped them again, and this time I put them on drop cloth fabric, and I like that thickness and that consistency much, much better. Next, I made myself a little template out of cardstock and just drew a little jack-o'-lantern face. And if you're not confident in your jack-o'-lantern drawing abilities, you can always Google an image that you can use as a template for your little face. Then I pinned my template to my orange ticking and I cut that out. And I was going to use this ticking behind that, but I thought that it was not standing out enough. So I decided to use the black and white check instead, and I just traced around my little pumpkin template to cut that out. So then when I get those two pieces together, that is really, really cute. I thought I'd bring the camera in a little closer so you could see better what I'm doing. I'm using some Fabri-Tac glue and just a very small amount 
that I am going to place in areas where I'm not going to be stitching because I don't want that to gum up my sewing machine. And I'm just going to put a little bit on my finger and just dab it around in areas, as I said, that I'm not going to be stitching. But if you want to glue your entire project together, you absolutely can do this entire pillow with glue. But I just like to stitch mine. Tap it around in here. That way when I start stitching, it's not going to start bunching up. I cut two pieces of my drop cloth fabric at 9 inches by 24 inches. So I'm going to start by folding this piece in half. That's going to be my front. Kind of finger pressing it to mark the middle. And then I'm going to place my little jack-o'-lantern face on there. And I'm going to pin that into place. And just double check to make sure that's in the middle. So now that I have all of that pinned on, I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to use black thread to stitch around each of the eyes and the mouth and also around the outside of the pumpkin to secure that in place. But you could use iron-on fusible webbing to adhere your pumpkin or you could also use some type of glue such as the Fabri-Tac and that would work just as well. But I like to stitch, so I'm going to go ahead to my machine, stitch all of that down, and then we'll be right back. And now that I have my little pumpkin face stitched on there, I'm going to kind of rough up these edges so they look more rustic and frayed. And those little frayed edges are going to look just adorable. And then any of these that are sticking out, I'm just going to clip those off. And then you can see how cute that turns out when everything is all frayed and trimmed. I just like that. It's so super duper cute. And now I just need to place out my letters. I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to pin those into place and take them over to the sewing machine and stitch around the edges on these as well. So I've got my letters on there and if you have a quilt ruler it really helps to quickly make sure that everything is aligned. So this is a handy little gadget even if you don't quilt it helps you to get all of your items lined up pretty well on your projects. So I've got all of my letters stitched on there, going around the outline of each of the letters there. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the letters that I did with the little pumpkin. And I'm going to go around each of the letters and rough up all of those edges. And it gives it a nice little rustic appearance. And now I've got all of those edges frayed. I really, really like that. And now I want to put grain sack stripes on here to add a little bit of interest to our otherwise kind of plain panel here. I have taped off this section here. Roll that over my grain sack stripes. Line it up and press it down. I have had this stamp so, so many years. I don't even think it's in production anymore. You can get grain sack stripe stencils, or you can even use tape to tape off and create your own stripes any size that you prefer. I like that very much. And I got a little bit of that ink onto this edge here, but that doesn't matter because that's going to be in my seam allowance and that is never going to show. So I'm going to go ahead and go off camera and re-ink my stamp and do the same thing to this edge as well. And there we have it. That is going to be so cute. I let all of my ink dry overnight and then I took a hot dry iron and I heat set all of that ink. And then I took some 
burlap and stitched on a cute little stem for my pumpkin. And I just couldn't be more pleased with how this is looking so far. Now the next step is to stitch my pillow together. So I'm taking my back piece, laying that over the top of this one, and I'm gonna pin my pieces together, and I'm leaving a section at the bottom open for me to be able to stuff my pillow. Now that it's stitched up with my opening here, large enough for me to get my hand inside, I am going to clip my corners because that helps the corners to actually be more crisp when you turn everything right side out. So I always just clip off the top of the corner there, and I'll do that on all four corners. And then I'm gonna turn everything right side out and give it all a good press. And now we are ready to stuff. And I just use polyfill that I pick up from either Hobby Lobby or Walmart. And you can even use old pillows that you have on hand. Anything like that to stuff your pillow will be just fine. Now it's all nice and stuffed and I've got one more trip to the sewing machine to stitch that up together and then we are finished with our adorable little pillow. So I actually have this stuffed pretty full and this would not fit underneath my sewing machine presser foot so I just took a needle and thread and did an overhand stitch to close that up. I am just so pleased with how this turned out. I think it is absolutely adorable. Well, now let's go ahead and move on to our next project. So this is the inspiration for our next project. Isn't that just the cutest? So just get yourself an empty can of pumpkin and also some florals to create a gorgeous little fall inspired floral arrangement. So first I'll be cutting off a section of this floral styrofoam here. That way all of my flowers are gonna stay in place. So I'm gonna make an imprint. Kinda hard to see there, but at least I can see the outline and know how wide I need to make my cuts. This isn't sharp, but I can still use it to make some impressions in this floral foam. And then turn it over and snap that right off. And then we're going to shove it into our can. I'm going to lay this on the side and do the same thing to get rid of the excess off of here as well. So I've got some stuff here that was Walmart, some of it Dollar Tree. I've also got some moss and some other little florals and a little garland that I think was maybe a Dollar Tree garland as well. So I'm just going to start putting some things in there and just see how I like it. But I do like all of these traditional fall colors. I think that is just so pretty. I'm going to take some of this extra and just stick along in here just so I have a solid area to deal with. And then I'm going to glue a little bit of moss on there. Then I'm going to clip some of these off here because I don't want to stick that whole thing down in my can. And then I can just pop these in and play around with the placement. I think maybe some of those leaves glued in around there. Then I'm just going to continue adding some leaves and some of these other little flowers and fill in in here just so all of that looks nice all the way around our little can here. And I'm happy with that. I made a little bow out of some gingham ribbon and I just continued to fill in all of those blank spaces just to make sure that it looks very nice from any angle. I had had this up here and I didn't like that, so I moved that to the back and then put the little bow there and another little pumpkin. And I think that looks really, really cute. 
I'm very pleased with how cute, quick, easy, and fun this little project was. Well, now let's go ahead and move on to our next project. And for our last project, this is my inspiration here. And I do not know how to do palette knife painting, and I don't have any of that textured paint either. So I'm going to be using some clay and also some stamps from the Iron Orchid Designs Fruitful Harvest collection that has these beautiful little pumpkins in there to create a similar look. First, I'm going to thinly roll out some clay that is going to be placed over the top of my nine and a half by nine and a half inch board here. And now I'm just going to pull the excess from around the edges so it doesn't hang over the board. Then I'm taking some tight bond wood glue and I'm going to secure my clay down to my wood. And you don't need a whole lot. And then I'm just going to gently roll over just to make sure that my clay is nice and firmly attached to my wood. I'm going to place down my stamps and I'm not pushing anything in just yet because I want to get the placement. And it's hard to see because I've got everything layered on the top there, but I'm going to pull this up. The way this works is whatever you want to be the front of your pattern needs to be placed down first. So I'm going to put that into my clay. And you can see how pretty that is. It comes with what are called masks. And each of these masks corresponds to the individual stamps. So this is the fit for this one right here. What I'm going to do is take this mask and lay it over where I've already stamped. So it fits perfectly over what I have already imprinted into the clay. And I've placed that pumpkin over the top of that. And now I am going to imprint all around and not pressing on where that mask is. So then when I remove this, you can see that that leaf is in front of the pumpkin. And this is going to show up better once I get everything painted. So I'm going to put that mask back on there and then place that down and then come back with my large pumpkin over the top of that. And I'm just working my fingers all the way around the design, imprinting all of that into my clay. And I'm very carefully going to make impressions in the clay around those masks so I don't disturb the image that those have already created. So then I'll lift this up. You can see this pumpkin and this leaf are in the foreground and the larger pumpkin is in the background. I'm actually going to put that back down. I didn't stamp this too well, just to get a better impression right there. That's a much better impression right there. So I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to come back and get some paint on this and that's going to bring out this gorgeous design and all of our individual little elements that we've added to our board. So now that I have let this dry overnight, I'm going to be painting my little pumpkins here. And I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in the colors pumpkin, hazelnut, and moss. And as I start painting, 
all of those little details start to come out. So I'll finish painting my leaf here. And now I'm coming in with that hazelnut and painting on my little stems here. Now we come back in with our pumpkin and we start filling in our pumpkins. That is going to be so pretty. So I'm just going to take a few minutes and paint both of my pumpkins and then we'll come back and get some wax treatments to bring out even more of our details. So I painted the area surrounding the pumpkin in the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and that is going to help my wax be able to move a little better because that clay would just grab onto the wax and then it wouldn't move. So now I'm going to coat the entire piece in Annie Sloan clear wax, but whatever clear wax you have will be just fine. I'm just going to rub that over the entire surface in a circular motion. And then I'm going to wipe away the excess and just kind of buff that into the surface. And now I'm going to be adding my dark paste wax over the top of that. And that's just a personal preference. You definitely don't have to do that. I just enjoy adding that dark wax. So I'm going to rub that in. And when you first add that dark wax, it looks like a hot mess. But when you take a rag and you start wiping off the excess, you can see how that just settles into those creases and all those crevices and just looks so, so gorgeous. So I'm going to continue adding my dark wax and then coming back over the top and wiping away the excess. And you can leave as much or as little of that dark wax as you prefer. Oh, look at that leaf. Oh, just gorgeous. And I just love using that antiquing wax. It just settles into all of those cracks and the imperfections in the clay and just really brings out all of the details in our leaf and our pumpkins. I just love that. Well, now all I need to do is get everything styled up and show you how beautiful all of this week's projects turned out.
you so much for joining me today. It has been my pleasure to craft with you. Please subscribe for more kind of shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations. And until next time, my sweet friends, be blessed.